This behind me is Cursor, the AI editor. And really all it is is VS Code with GPT built in. And you can just download it for free. I'll put a link down below. You can click on or just go to Cursor. I think it's Cursor.sh is the website to download it. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool program because it keeps you from having to open up a browser tab and VS Code. Honestly, it accomplishes the same thing, just a little bit faster. So let's jump on the actual desktop, go over it. I'm not just gonna do programming either. We're gonna actually grab some markdown files and I'm gonna show you kind of some unique use cases here. Also, I don't think of AI as, hey, I want you to just write this program for me, go do it. It's not that. I think what AI is, is a great learning tool, meaning grab some Somebody else's code that's really good and then tell AI to examine it and explain it to you. That's really where it shines. And that's where I want to actually show in this. So let's let's jump on here and actually jump into what this thing can do. So right here is a C project I have, DWM. And it's beyond my skills. Uh, and I I very rudimentary with my C programming. So a lot of times I'm like, I don't know what any of this does. So let's say create mon what's all this do and what you can do with cursor is highlight that entire function and then we can just hit control k and say explain this code to me and document it so this function creates a new monitor and initializes its properties it allocates memory for the monitor sets its tags and gives all the the variables it also sets the per tag properties for each tag. So I could either exit out or I could just bring that back. Right here, it allocates memory. This one initials the tag set. And it's a great way of actually following up behind someone. Like let's say you have to grab someone else's code and then pick it up from there. A lot of times you're just like, I have no idea what they did because they didn't document it very well. This is where it really comes in handy. And I love this use case of AI uh, or chat GPT is really what it is. So all this is doing is going to GPT. And if you want to you know, use your own API or open AI key, you can. If you're only going to do this a couple times a day, I'd recommend that approach because that'll that way you can use GPT-4 and it only costs you a couple bucks. If you want to just use GPT-3, you can. And you don't necessarily have to go this route. You can also go to control L instead of K. And this is more of a general one. And you can select the different model here. You can go 3.5, use it all day long, or four, uh, and use it that way too. So that's kind of the neat use case for here. But let's actually move on from C programming because there's a lot to actually look at beyond just the programming aspect of it. I love just explaining it as I learn languages and other programming. I absolutely, this is what I use it all the time for. As far as writing functions and those types of things, it does an all right job, but it makes more mistakes than it gets right a lot of times. So having it write like a huge function and a massive file like this files, you know, about 3,500, you know, lines long to do something like this and really utilize this type of program. I would break this out into a whole bunch of different files and, and shrink the size. That way it could analyze it a lot better. But, uh, you know, that's neither here or there. I just wanted to explain if you have a huge program, you can't just toss this in and say, write a new function for this because it just can't analyze that much data uh, in this use case. But it is very good at explaining specific functions and gives you the ability to really add on where you might be lost before. So let's open up a different one. I'm going to actually open up my website now. We're going to go into it. And this is just a Hugo website with markdown files. So really basic. And if you look, let's go to posts. Like I've got a couple different new stuff on. I just did like remove YouTube shorts. And it has all this in here. This is just the code or the, the article on my website. I'm like, okay, cool. But what else can I do with this? I'm going to actually create something new. Let's come back to the root of my website here. We're going to open up a new terminal. And I'm just going to go Hugo new posts and we're going to create cursor sh uh we'll just say cursor editor dot markdown this is, creates a new file now this is kind of where i want to generate a whole bunch of text so we'll just do control k uh write an article on cursor editor 
from, and then I'm going to feed it a website. So let's actually uh, come on over to here and pull up cursor.sh. And this is the AI code first editor. So I'm going to go here. So this is pretty hilarious. I had it, didn't actually do this prompt before the video, but it actually created and thinks that this whole editor edits and creates and customizes mouse cursors. <laughs> That's hilarious. Ah, so this is the funny part about uh, some stuff. But the cool thing here is we can actually limit the code down. We're going to actually reject that. We're going to go control backspace. So to fix this problem with it, we're going to just hit the at symbol, come down to docs. And I already created this doc, but you can add a new doc. And then you just put in like the website that you wanted to call. It'll go fetch that website and kind of reassociate its next example based on the document you're about to give it. So what we're going to do is just go at, come down to docs. And this is the doc I created specifically over cursor.sh. And then give a, an overview of the cursor AI editor and tips and tricks. So now that it's done, we're going to just hit control enter to accept. Let's look at this. It's a cursor AI editor is revolutionary in the way developers write code. Perfect. Features like control K and command K, which is good. And that's what we've been using. Copilot plus plus. It's actually down here in the bottom. We could actually disable this or enable it. I like Copilot mainly for autocomplete of line by line basis. I don't really trust Copilot in like a more than one line. It always goes crazy and goes awry, but for it, it's pretty good at analyzing my code and going, okay, I see what you're doing. This is probably what you want for the autocomplete. So great for that. So those are the two big things. And then AI chat, understanding and debugging things. You can actually debug certain things by actually right clicking and analyzing it that way. Or you can go control L and pull in all the stuff over here and change your, your document or reference things or just click new chat or go back in history and go, what else have I been looking up here? Let's look at all the other past chats and you can pull up other snippets. So if I wanted to add like a function and be like, hey, write me an example function of something, you could get an example here and then kind of base your code off. You could directly copy it, but I don't recommend that a lot of times. Like I said, it does make a lot of errors as you know GPT does as well, but it's really easy to reference things very fast. Utilizing uh, symbols, pretty good. I showed that actually adding a documentation. Uh, I highly recommend doing this, especially with scripting languages. Most people know GPT doesn't do very good with like PowerShell or bash. And if you want to feed it the actual documents and reference only those documents and then ask it a question, you usually get a lot better results, much like we did here when making this markdown fixes lints with ease, which is great. Uh, and then you got uh, terminal control K write terminal commands in plain English. This feature is incredibly useful for writing SQL commands. I haven't tried that yet, so I don't know how accurate that is. Uses images to prompt the AI. Uh, this is really cool. I, I'm actually going to try to do a uh, web UI three on my PowerShell tool. And I, I wonder to see how well it does with actually grabbing something from like Figma and writing some example code for it and like C sharp. Uh, we'll, we'll give that a whirl sometime. Uh, in the future and other things it's referencing command K, you know, we're not some Mac user here. I actually want this written for mostly Linux and windows because that's most people that watch my channel are, are Linux and windows users. So I'm going to actually just change this. Let's go command K, uh, change command K to control plus K. Another cool thing is if you see like lists or things like that, what it can do is it can go through and then pull out those lists, go ahead and fix markdown. So it looks a lot better for you and go through, feed it whatever you need, and then it's done. Um, and then we just fix some basic inconsistencies here. And it's just an easy way to get your work done quicker. And you just double check, read it, add to it. And it's just meant as a, as, as a starting point. For, for a lot of your work. A lot of people try and treat it as, hey, write it all for me without checking things. But really, it's more about finding those few things. Now, you'll notice this article is pretty short. There's really only a couple key features here. Control K, uh, Copilot++, and really Control L, which I, I talked briefly about, which is the sidebar chat. Uh, and then just adding docs. 
There's probably a little bit more that it can do, but that's really all this is. It's just VS Code. It pulls in all your existing extensions, imports everything from VS Code directly into Cursor. There's not much more to this project that I can see. I'm actually surprised they can get away with doing it like this. But uh, for now, I really like the ease of use of it. Having said that, I think there's going to be an extension in VS Code soon that does all this. And I probably would transition off of Cursor back to VS Code. However, right now, I can't find anything that has as clean of a workflow than Cursor SH. So for now, I'm going to use it. But in the future, I have a feeling uh, a lot of this is going to be baked into VS Code or someone will make it to where it can do all the same stuff. Having said that, I think this is a good starting point. Now, let's take a look at this article real fast. I'm just going to go Hugo Server FD. And we're going to take a peek and see how well this does. Let's go localhost and cursor editor. Yeah, let's zoom that down. This is what it made. Pretty good. I would still need to go over with a fine tooth cone before I publish something like this, but I'm going to put this along with it so you can actually reference it. I, I don't think this is necessarily a great article, but it, it's such a simplistic way to use cursor. Really, Remember the control K, remember control L, and then just understanding Copilot and AI chat are the really big things here. And then adding specific documents with the, the at symbol was also a huge leap forward for me. So those are the big things. I still need to try out control K in the terminal, uh, specifically for like SQL commands, but also, uh, you know, like vision and prompting from an image using web UI development. Uh, you know, taking a, some a Figma drawing and then making code out of that. That's also something else I want to try out of this product. But for today, I want to leave you with that. Go explore it. Let me know in the comments what you think, or if you found that VS Code extension that feels like that this should be, uh, let me know about that as well. Anyways, hope you enjoy and I'll see you in the next one.